Hello gorgeous, I'm the Fairy Voice Mother and today I'm going to be reacting to So Hyang singing Arirang Alone. Turn you on. These are little paintings that I do. I love painting. It's a little pigeon outside. Now this request has been made hundreds of times. So today's the day and I'm very excited to see what all the fuss is about. So let's do it. A little sip of tea first, I'm not a hooligan. Here we go! My laptop's only gone and bloody died. One second. She's gonna make a full recovery, don't worry. Here we go for reals. Disney movie is this? Let's just set the scene, let's get in the vibe. There's this guy, like a prince, that's marrying like this horrible person, but he's actually in love with her and she's in love with him and then on the wedding day, she just couldn't ruin. The prince is about to marry this like horrible person and then So Hyang comes in, in her wedding dress, like through the stained glass window in the church. It's starting to sound a bit like Shrek, but anyway. So her singing voice has like magical powers to show people's true colours and then so the other lady just turns into a worm or something. Now it sounds a bit like The Little Mermaid. And then she marries the prince instead and they live happily ever after. You heard it here first. Uh, vocal technique. Yes. Good question. I can't remember now. I'll, I'll have to go back. technique is most commonly referred to as head voice. However, obviously that doesn't tell us very much information because we don't have a voice in our head. We have a voice in our larynx. So how this is produced anatomically is um, you've got your two vocal cords and they're closing together. And if they close all the way, then you get like a really strong, rich sound. However, what she's doing there to achieve this head voice um, sound quality is opening a little portion of the vocal folds. So that's what makes this sound so effortless and beautiful, like a bell ringing, because you don't need all of that muscle strength to keep thick, closed vocal cords. And she's done this exquisitely. I mean, the pitch is so satisfying. That top note was just a perfect bang on G. So we measure pitch in cents, and there's a hundred cents between every semitone. So when we say that singers are too flat or too sharp, they're like however many cents below or above the note. So if a singer is like 10 cents flat, people wouldn't usually notice, like that would be quite normal. But if you're 60 cents flat, it would sound really quite horrible. But most singers will usually be a bit out either way, which is totally fine. We're human beings, we're not uh, pitching forks, you know, it, it, that's just gonna happen. If you are someone that has quite sensitive ears, you might realise that when you listen to her sing this phrase, you feel really like, Made me bloody jump. You'll feel really satisfied listening to this because the pitch is very, very unusually accurate. Oh. Mm. 
You hear that increase in effort. Now that zip is starting to close. So she needs more strength. She needs to engage her laryngeal muscles, the intercostal muscles, the abdominal muscles. They've all got to start to work together now to support this thicker core closure. There'll be a little bit more pressure built up in the throat, so it's just a much more intense way to sing. And after that initial thick closed vocal sound, she then transitions up to the old one, the slightly more separate, and then back down again. But it wasn't really, really intense with like a heavy dropped larynx and really closed thick chords. Like that would be this sound. So this vocal quality is called a mix. But again, mixed voice doesn't really tell us anything, does it? You don't like stir your voices up and mix them in a little pot, you know. It's just far-fetched. Now this could get horrifically nerdy, so I'll try and keep this explanation brief, but essentially what happens is when you mix your voices and you don't go full on thick or full on thin, chest head, whatever, there's these two laryngeal muscles that you have that work in tandem to slack your vocal cords and stretch your vocal cords. The shortener muscle, your thyroarytenoid, and your lengthener muscle, the cricothyroid. <laughs> So they work in tandem, just like the bicep and tricep, to manipulate the length of your vocal cords. Now, when you do this mixed voice technique, you basically use that shortener muscle and the lengthener muscle in tandem. So you get a little bit of closure in the folds, you get them thinned out a little bit, but not too thin, so it's pretty thin, and then thick, but not too thick. So your vocal cords are not all the way lengthened to create a really, really thin sound, it's just my lengthener muscle. And they're not all being controlled by the shortener muscle either. So it's a little mix of both. Now, as you can imagine, there is an infinite possibility of combinations, like what muscles you could use to control your vocal cords. This is why, you know, you can spend years and years and years mastering this technique and getting the most perfect sound at the perfect parts in your range. So strengthening and training and toning these muscles is something that singers will work on in their vocal sessions or in their private practice to make sure that they have a full understanding of how these muscles work and how they can use them to control their voice and get it to do whatever they want it to do. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, let's keep going. Amazing laryngeal control. And she's kept her larynx still suspended when she goes down to some of those lower notes. <laughs> Rather than <laughs> So this just proves that she's super conscious about the kind of sound quality that she wants. You know, she doesn't want this big, heavy, relaxed, dropped sound. <laughs> That was a lovely vowel. Easing the tongue through for yeah, then relaxing the tongue and letting a lovely laryngeal vibrato happen here. Yeah, really open throat. Beautiful way to introduce what sounds like it's gonna be a new section. That vocal cord control is astounding. How she's using these muscles, transitioning between one and the other and then using them in combination is like, she don't play. And this doesn't happen overnight either. She probably has had extensive training, but that's not even what I mean. It's just like practicing every day at controlling these muscles so that you can rely on them as much as this, you know. She's worked and- Boy, has it paid off. <laughs> This face position 
is very specific. Scrunching the nose, lifting the cheeks, and lifting the tongue is trapping all of that resonance created by those thin vocal cords up in here. So you get that really, really rich bell-like quality. I keep saying the word bell today. I'm getting very excited, aren't I, as well? This is why you'll see this face used by most singers that sing these kind of phrases in this kind of register, just because it's just so much easier to get a more bright sound. Her weight is so even in both of her feet as well, and this hand movement is really encouraging a strong but energised foundation. Her jaw is so relaxed, it's being allowed to perfectly just hinge directly down whenever she needs a little bit more space in her mouth to produce this resonance. Board. I saw what you did there. So the really narrow mouth position on he provided that little back pressure that we were just talking about earlier to then ah, open up into that big note and help her tackle that really large interval with precision. Absolutely unbelievable, oh my gosh. I just want to watch it again. I think it's very easy to forget when you watch this that this is an actual human being. She's just mesmerising. The way that she moves and looks and sounds and is. Maybe this is just a Pixar animation from the year 2031. I think spellbound is an accurate word to describe my emotions at this time. She is the queen and we are the sorry people. I'm kidding, we're great, but she is, you know, spectacular. So Kyang, so good. If you would like to develop some of the strength that she has in your own voice, I would really recommend seeing how high you can take E without letting it go shouty and strainy. So you can put your hand here and just kind of do E By keeping your hand here, it's gonna stop you from using your face. And in turn, you will be using these muscles far more. So you see how that isn't all thick, yeah, yeah, and it's not all thin, yeah, yeah. That's why they call it mix. So you can just sing any kind of melody on this E and strengthen those muscles and you'll be mixing like a pro in no time. Well, I mean, it will take you some time, don't get me wrong, but 
you'll be well on your way. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed making it. If there are any singers you would like to see me react to, please let me know in the comments. It would be my pleasure. I hope you have a wonderful day. I love you very much and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye. Hello. I've still got my pyjamas on. Bye.